Welcome back to Biafra News Support Biafra. If you are just coming across my channel for the first time, kindly click the red subscribe button. Turn on the notification bell right beside it to enable you get notification once a new video is being uploaded. And welcome to the new and old subscribers. So my people, I bring you a message. And this message is from Mazen Namde Kano Bosom Friend. And uh, he didn't mention his name. But I will allow you to watch this very video. I want to pass this message to Biafra. So we should take this message very serious. Mazen, the person they are holding in DSS dungeon is very, very important to Biafra. It's the whole of Africa and the whole world. So we should take this message serious. Mazen Amdekan has been in DSS dungeon going to two years now. Those sabotaging his freedom are sabotaging it. Those betraying, those working for his freedom are betraying. So Biafra should take this message very serious. It's from Mazen Amdekan, a bosom friend, but he refused mentioning his name. But he passed this message across to be a friend. And we should take it serious. Mazen Namdekano is not a man that, that, that the zoo should play with. But the corruption has made the whole world keep quiet. Upon Mazen Namdekano being kidnapped and tortured in Kenya and being renditioned illegally to Nigeria, the whole world kept quiet. If this friend of Mazen Namdekano passed this message to be a friend, we should take this message serious. Don't forget to share this video. Don't forget to like. It's very, very important. So watch this video, listen to it, share after watching or while watching. Thank you all. Still your one and only Ada Biafra. And here is my channel. Thank you. Hello, Biafrans. If you're a real Biafra person, please listen to this very message about Mazem Nandi Kano. How I became his follower from 2009, 2010, 11 up to you now that I want to re review some secrets that I know about him, some things that I know about him. Listen carefully. This one will benefit every one of you, both your family and friends as well. Like this man is not an ordinary person. And uh, the way I saw him at that time, the first time that I, I heard his voice on, uh, on uh, I think, social media on Facebook. Yeah, I heard his voice on Facebook. And I was saying, who is this man? This man is very bold. The way he speaks, it's very, very bold. And one day, I'm going to see him. So on his broker, some of the broadcast, I keep hearing that uh, he's going to different places to go and broadcast. That is uh, where I, at that time I was in London then. So I said one of these days I will find out and uh, go to one of his brokers. I want to see him face to face. And there was a time he went to Ireland and the island people welcomed him. Do you know the good thing about this? Anywhere he goes, he doesn't pay t his ticket. He doesn't, he doesn't uh, buy a ticket. They always invite him. The people that are inviting him always buy his ticket to travel to anywhere he's going all over the world. They always buy his ticket. So, and uh, from there, I started saying, I said, this man is very important, you know. It looks like uh, it's more important than all these presidents that is a American president or any other person. Because anywhere he goes, before he reached here, there is a lot of people waiting for him. So let's proceed. And uh, I started listening to him, listening to him. The things that are coming to my head, I said, this man, one day I will, I will see him. We'll call him director at that time because he's the director of Radio Biafra. So, and uh, I said one day I will see him. So there was a time um, they announced, because anywhere he's going to, they will announce it that he's coming to that place. And uh, if you have time, you can go and use the opportunity to see him. So I went there. There was the one time he was broadcasting in a place called uh, Peckham. If you know the place called Peckham in southeast in London. So I used to live um, in Luton. That is L-U-T 
T-O-N. I used to live in Luton. So some of his broadcast, um, there's one lady that normally go out. Um, there's, I think, uh, it's like a personal secretary also. Uh, her name is uh, Carol Monday. So if you have been following for a long time, you will know her. She's the white woman. Her name is Carol Monday. So there was a day, a day they came um, to that place. They said they want to uh, do some broadcast. So and uh, on that broadcast there was a meeting. So after the meet, after the broadcast, the meeting carries on. So I used the opportunity to join them, and uh, that was where that was my first time. I saw him face to face. Even before I saw him face to face. I was, uh, I used to chat with him, you know, on Facebook. So, and I, there was time I called him. Um, no, I didn't call, just chat. So I said, I said, director, I said, this job that you are doing is very, very, um, like dangerous. So I, I was thinking he's a military man before, you know, because he has mind to talk a lot of things. That he doesn't care who he affect or he, even though he will say, he doesn't feel sorry for himself. So I say, wow. So after um, that uh, bro broadcast, um, when they want to do the broadcast, I went. And uh, I went in there, I sat at the, at the back. So, and he was preaching, he was saying the gospel, he was preaching and preaching. Me that is talking from here, I'm from Delta State, and I speak Okwane, I speak Yoruba, I understand Isoko, I understand Bene, I understand Yoruba, I understand some of Ijo languages, I understand Igbo, and I, I do speak some of them as well, that's though in a funny way. So let's proceed. As uh, as we go, as the, as this man was preaching, this man in Namdekan was preaching, telling people, I was looking at him. So he is the one I have been hearing his voice on the uh, on the radio, on on uh, Facebook as well. I said after this, I will I will speak to him. I will see him. So, and. Uh, there was, uh, after the broadcast, uh, everybody was greeting him. And, uh, I was, I was able to, to meet him to, um, through the lady that is, uh, Carol Monday. I was able to meet him. And, uh, I shook his hand. I felt like, yes, I have seen him. I have even touched him. Very, very proud. That oh definitely anytime he's going any broadcast, I I'm going to follow him if I have if I'm around if I'm at home, I'm going to follow him and to that broadcast. So after that day, I think a week or two later, um I I I posted something about him. Some people keep criticizing me and blah blah blah. So I said I don't care. So another day as well. I, there was a time I, I said, let me try and chat him again if he's going to respond. And I did. And he responded immediately. So I was telling him that, I said, uh, I don't have document in this country. And uh, I'm, I'm trying if I can have, because I, the one I applied before, they, they denied me. And uh, they didn't give me the document. So they said, because I don't have family here. You know, I said, uh, you know, I said, I should not worry that I should try apply again, that they will give me my document. That's in the UK, United Kingdom. So I said, okay, um, I tried again and I applied. In fact, three months, they gave me my paper. So I told him, I told him, I said, I've gotten my paper and uh, I want to see you. He said, he said he, he's, he's, uh, 
is moving around at that, that time and is not around. So I think he went to he went to America. He went to one one place in America. I don't know if it's Chicago or something. Yeah, he went there. So and I say, okay, when he comes, that uh, I will see him. Even upon his upon his um, visit there in America, there's still other people that wanted to see him. Uh, they want him to come to their meeting to broadcast. So that's how he moves around. He goes to Israel a um, couple of times. Um, that was the 2000. Um, that's before 2015. So when he, he was uh, arrested or when he was kidnapped from uh, Lagos, that time that he stopped in, uh, in Lagos International Airport, that's Mohamed, Mo 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 so, yeah. he stopped there. And uh, from there, they traced him to where he, he lodged in the hotel because before he can go, he can proceed his journey in the next morning. They just went to go and kidnap him, then they took him to Abuja. And that was when... I said, oh, this is very, very bad. I felt serious pain. Felt serious pain. And um, there was a time, because of that, I made one uh, video. That's the reason why, in the beginning of this uh, um, audio, I didn't want to mention my name because I've done some things that they were, the federal government were looking for me they thought they thought I would live in Nigeria, so they were looking for me. They thought I lived there. They couldn't find me, and uh, when people around my area discovered that it was me, um, I think uh, police came and they, they arrested me. They put handcuffs on my hand. They took me to the uh, uh, police station and stuff. But I didn't want to go in details because people that knows me will. We know about what I'm talking about now. So after a while, after a while, I said, what is this? Why did they arrest this man? I did not have any power to, to go to see him, to know what is, what is going on. Then from there, I kept on. I said, definitely, they will, <clears throat> they will relieve him. They will release him and he will be fine. So that's my encounter with, with what I want to say with this one as well. I said, you see the template that he has laid down, that is what um, Simon Ekpa is following. So if you think you are going to destroy everything, you have to rethink again because everybody are going to the same place. We cannot live in another man's land forever. Definitely when you get old, you will go home. Definitely, no matter how long it will take. If you don't go home, what about your children? Your children will go home too. So this is the best way and the best time for us to embrace um, the truth. Follow someone Ekpa. Do everything that he is saying because this is the template that has been laid down for a long time and it's been passed on to him as the disciple. The first time I didn't like how uh, Simon Ekpa do. Uh, it's not like I don't like him, but it just I'm not following him, but from time to time I do, I do see his video on Facebook. Like uh, when they arrested, um, um, where well, it is, is the kidnap now for the Kenyan one, and he put his sent message on his phone and saying that that uh, they only uh, kidnapped my leader, but they could not kid, uh, kidnap the disciple. That uh, they're not going to take it easy for with them with Nigeria. That they're going to continue for where months and they cannot stop. So I was thinking it's a joke. From there, and I still follow him every time. Anything he does, I follow him. And at the moment now. I've, uh, I've noticed that he has a lot of qualification. He has been to the army. He has been to 
different things. He is a lawyer, and uh, in fact, it's a it's a reserved army because if we don't take him serious now, the army people. If there's any fight or coming up in uh, where he lives in Finland, they will take him, and he will join them. Then our struggle is is finished from there because nobody is as spring up to to speak boldly like the way he's speaking. A lot of people have called to arrest him, arrest him, arrest him, but they they know that what he's doing is right. Let's uh, stop this uh, audio from here. And uh, dear friends, please put hand on deck. Let everybody do this once and for all. It's for our own benefit, for the future of our children. If you didn't benefit from it, your children will benefit from it. So let's take this issue very, very serious. This message, it comes from good heart. And please take it seriously. And it's very, very, very important. We have to go home. We cannot live in another man's land forever. I hope everybody here, please, we can put our hand together and we could get with you in the final. Uh -huh. So this thing will stop here. Next time we will talk. One day, one of these days, and I will see the person in the talk so. Bye. So, dear friends, we all heard what this man said. This man is a genuine Mazen Namdekan follower, and he has a genuine or has a very huge respect for Mazen Namdekan. If you are a genuine dear friend, you will know that what Mazen Namdekan is doing is the same thing Simon Ewa is doing. Those kicking against Simon Ewa should go and sit down and uh, use your tongue and count your teeth. You people know how Nigerian government is against the boys. So I don't know why you people are kicking against your own freedom, fighting against your own freedom. You people should ease up, put hands together, let us get this freedom and go our separate ways. That is the only thing. So thank you, dear friends. Don't forget to share, like, leave your comments at the comment section.